Hi, I'm Jack, and welcome back, because I'm going to talk to you guys about the first two episodes of What If. Just They are now on Disney+, Plus, and you can access them whenever you can. So this will be a spoiler review. I will talk about these episodes in whatever form, whether it's a big spoiler or a small spoiler. So if you haven't seen them yet, watch them on Disney+, Plus, and then come back here. And before that, don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is at the bottom of the screen, so don't forget to go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And with all that out of the way, let's start talking about it. Episode one is about what if Peggy Carter becomes the super soldier known as Captain Britain instead of Steve Rogers, and the movie shows you how that would have unfolded in a different alternate reality, while episode two focuses on what if T'Challa gets abducted by Yondu and becomes Star-Lord rather than becoming Black Panther. To kick off with the positives of both of these episodes, I thought the animation is gorgeous. It is easily one of my favorite animations I have seen from animated shows in recent years besides shows like Invincible and The Bad Batch. And I really like how it looks here. It feels different, unique from everything else I've seen before. And it pops and they look great. And the designs for all these characters like T'Challa and Peggy and Steve and Bucky and Yondu, it looks terrific. I really like it. And the second thing I really like about these episodes are the voice acting. Um, it was really cool to see these MCU actors from the movies, for the most part, reprising their roles as these characters in animated form. Some notable absences include Steve Rogers because Chris Evans didn't return and instead is replaced with Josh Keaton, who played Spider-Man in Spectacular Spider-Man, one of my favorite animated shows of all time. And... I really liked um, Haley Atwell as Peggy in this form of media because she's now voicing the character. And so I was seeing Sebastian Stan return as Bucky and Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace, um, coming back as T'Challa, but this time as a T'Challa who's Star-Lord rather than as Black Panther. Very good stuff. I really liked it. It fits well for me, and I really appreciate that they brought back these actual actors from the mcu to voice their characters in the show rather than recast everybody in a in, in this format for the show and the third thing i like about it is just the concept of the show because it's about what if these scenarios played out differently and i really liked how episode two played into that because i thought episode one more on the negative side. I thought episode one wasn't quite interesting with the what if concept because while they did the change where Peggy is the super soldier, the whole episode played out like a rushed version of Captain America, the first Avenger. So it had those exact same story beats. So it didn't feel that different besides the fact that Steve isn't the super soldier. And it was a little bit, of a letdown in that term because i expected because peggy is the super soldier i expected there to be like very different changes but it felt way too similar to first avenger because while animation wise looks great and the action sequences are really good and the voice acting is solid and it has some fun moments here and there story wise it falls flat because it didn't really give us a different alternate reality besides the central change, which is Peggy. And that was kind of a bummer, even though it's still a fine episode overall. But episode two was a better what if episode to me because it had T'Challa's Star-Lord and the episode did not rehash Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 because while T'Challa becomes Star-Lord, it turns out that that was on accident because in that reality... Yondu and them were still tasked by Ego to find Peter Quill. Eventually that failed and they just took T'Challa instead, which basically means you now have a universe where Peter Quill never left Earth and Ego finds him in the end of the episode. And it was really interesting because this was the episode that really plays on like different reality and actual ripple, the rippling effect. It actually feels like, yeah, this feels drastically different 
than the timeline we're used to seeing. And I really liked T'Challa's Star-Lord. He has a lot of charm to him, and I loved his dynamic with Yondu, and I loved how they actually had some very surprising moments, like Thanos is a redeemed Ravager, and um, Korath from the first Guardians is turned to their side because he really likes T'Challa. And so I there was a lot of really cool scenarios they did in episode two, and it paid off really well because I love the cosmic side of the MCU. So seeing these two episodes, well, primarily episode two, actually explore the rippling effect in the reality and shows just how drastically different this is. It's just, it's so cool. And it's really interesting to see. Plus, there are a lot of fun moments here and there, and it's paced really, really well. Because um, episode one, I had an issue where I feel like the pacing felt way too quick because it felt like it took all the main story beats from the first Avenger. But with episode two, it felt like because it knew it was it knew the runtime and it felt like it told all it needed to and it did not feel like it rehashed a movie we've seen before it felt original it felt fresh exciting this was a better what if episode in my opinion and i just loved how in entertaining it was and of course we got to see drax as a bartender and that was really cool so yeah, when when it comes to what if, I think episode two was the stronger episode than episode one. Not to say episode one was bad. I do enjoy it, but it, it could have been better to me. But episode two is easily like the really great stuff. And I really liked the scenario and seeing how T'Challa, the fact that he left Earth because Yandu and them abducted him really shows you kind of like what happened with Wakanda, especially as T'Challa vanished, like what that meant to them and what it meant to him. And like, should he return to Earth while they go on this mission? And I really dug the collector in that episode because I liked how Benicio Del Toro reprises his role from Guardians 1 and Infinity War. And so that was cool to see. Plus... Um, you actually got to see the children of Thanos from Infinity War, known as the Black Order, pop up in the episode as enemies. And I just loved episode two. For real, it was such a great episode. It is an absolutely emotional episode to watch because of Chadwick Boseman's passing. But it was a terrific episode, nonetheless. It's such a good episode. And I love how they really pushed this what-if scenario forward and shows you how drastically different everything became because T'Challa became Star-Lord rather than Peter Quill. And and then besides that, back to episode one, I felt like I did like how the ending had a similar feel to me where Peggy tries to stop the tentacle creature from coming to Earth. And because of that, it led to her getting displaced from time. So just as how Steve got frozen in the ice, and wakes up 70 years later, Peggy Carter encounters the same thing, except instead of getting frozen on ice, she goes in through a portal to like another dimension or something, and then she somehow, in, pre in like, I think 2012 in the first Avengers movie, she winds up back on Earth with Nick Fury and Hawkeye, voiced by Samuel L. Jackson and Jeremy Renner. And it was interesting, because it gives you that same ending feel from the first Avenger, where they were like, I had a date, and... While it did feel like it rehashed First Avenger, it I didn't mind the ending because, of course, that was once they both end up in present day, that's kind of how they both, what they both think of first. And I do like that. So overall, I thought episode one was entertaining. It had some fun moments, great action, really good voice acting. And I liked seeing Peggy as a super soldier. But on the story side... It just feels a little unoriginal and a little too derivative of the first Avenger, while episode two had very original stakes. It had original ideas, and I loved seeing T'Challa as Star-Lord and how drastically that changed 
that timeline and I love the animation work and the action and the pacing and the humor moments from that episode and overall I really hope we get more what if episodes like episode two because I think that will be pretty hard to top because of how well they tackled the ripple effect and all that and plus it was just a fun episode overall but one thing I'm hoping they do in the future is because Chadwick Boseman still voiced T'Challa and I think two or three more episodes outside of this one that they're gonna go back to his timeline and go back yeah go back to that timeline where it turns out Ego arrived on Earth at a Dairy Queen where we find out Peter Quill has been working at because this is that now the timeline where Peter never gets abducted from Earth ever since his mom passed away so that will be interesting to see and see would that be a similar what if Guardians 2 played out differently or just what would happen would T'Challa fight Ego how will that go down so yeah great stuff I do hope they continue with that in the future of the show so overall I'm going to give what if episode one a B and I'm going to give what if episode two an A so yeah, if you're a Marvel fan, definitely check out this show. I think it's worth your time and it's worth watching. And if you have Disney Plus, go right into it if you're a fan. And those are my thoughts on What If Episodes 1 and 2. What did you think about this episode? Did you like them? Did you dislike them? Are you sort of mixed about it? I would love to hear your thoughts on it. And with that said, don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is on the bottom of the screen, so don't forget to follow me on social media while you're at it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. And stay tuned for more. Space. Time. Time. Reality. It's more than a linear path. It's a prism of endless possibility. Well, that doesn't sound ominous at all.